All right, good Tuesday morning to you all. It's uh, good to be with you again. If you have your Bible, go ahead and get to 1 John 5. That's what we're looking at this morning, finishing up the letter. Uh, Let me read through the the verses and then we'll talk some about them. Starting in verse 6 all the way through verse 12. It says this, This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree. If we receive testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has borne concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. And this is the testimony that God gave us, eternal life. And this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I love a good uh, courtroom drama. I don't know if you do that, this argument back and forth, the the debate that goes on. And and that's what we have here, uh, an argument in a courtroom kind of setting where a testimony is given about the truth of a person. And John starts from the very beginning that there are three things that point to the truth of who Jesus is, the water, the blood, and the spirit. The water being that Jesus started his ministry with baptism. That's how his ministry started. The blood in that he atoned for sin through his blood. And then the spirit that is left when he um, ascends to be with the Father for our help. The spirit's our help. And so the testimony that's given about the person and work of Jesus are, are three. The, the water, the, the blood, and the spirit. That's a lot to put put out there as a testimony, an argument about Jesus. And and if that's not enough, we're shown that God himself also gives testimony of his son. God speaks of his son. It says, if we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. We can hear a lot of things from men, right? There are a lot of things that that men will tell us that, that may or may not be true. But the testimony of God is greater because it's all pointing to Jesus, And in that, his testimony about his son is what? Where does it all land? Where does it all find its culmination? It's this, in eternal life. It's in eternal life. The testimony that God gives about his son is about eternal life. So coming off of a weekend of celebrating around Easter, it's, I think, really helpful to, to move in a direction of seeing that God the Father himself points at God the Son and says, look at him. Look at Jesus. Eternal life is found in him alone. He he came with a testimony of of being baptized as his uh, initiation into ministry and his blood being shed for us and the spirit being left as our help. All of that uh, pointing to our eternal life in Christ.